Um, our next speaker will be talking about um, things that um, a lot of us may not even, you know, think about. Uh, well, we, we feel it in our gut, but we don't really, we can't really quite make sense of it, which is really economics. Uh, Mr. J.C. Punungbayan is a PhD candidate at the UP School of Economics. He is also a columnist at Rappler.com. Um, he is um, the UP School of Economics class valedictorian in 2019, and he graduated summa cum laude and received numerous awards during his graduation. He likewise earned his master's degree from the UP School of Economics in 2013 and is now a teaching fellow and um, a senior lecturer there. He has also served um, the National Economic Development Authority, the SEC, the Philippine Competition Com Commission, and the World Bank Office in Manila. So maybe JC will be able to make sense um, as to the economic situation of the Philippines right now during this pandemic. JC? Hi, Kari. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Wolfgang and Bayan and the rest of the FNF team for the invitation. Uh, so I think it's really important that we talk about the economy because this pandemic is as much a public health crisis as it is an economic crisis. So we really need to understand the economics of it. Uh, can we have the slide, please? Okay, so I'll be focusing on the economic fallout. Next. Next slide, there. So I wanted to start with the notion of uh, uh, the previous slide, please. I, uh, the previous one. <laughs> yung isa pa, yung the previous one. There we go. So I wanted to start with the notion of uh, freezing the economy. So if you've ever watched Star Wars Episode Five, uh, you'll be familiar with uh, Han Solo, played by Harrison Ford. Uh, he was frozen in carbonite and uh, transported um, from one side of the galaxy to another. Uh, basically, he's um, immobilized and put on life support. And then he was later reanimated um, by uh, uh, Princess Leia. <laughs> but uh, I argue that um, we need exactly the same thing for the Philippine economy. So basically, what we're doing right now is putting the Philippine economy under forced hibernation. So we, we pare down all the uh, operations of the economy, all sectors, except those that we really need the essential sectors. And then later we reanimate it once the pandemic is over. But as you can imagine, the price, uh, there's a heavy, uh, large price to pay for this kind of economic hibernation. And uh, we can expect um, severe economic downturn. Next. So this graph shows you the trade-off between the public health objective and the economic objective. So you can see the red line. So that's the epidemic curve uh, on top. Uh, we need to flatten the curve, as uh, epidemiologists say. But uh, there's, a, there's, there's a catch. So the more we flatten the curve, the epidemic curve, the deeper the economic downturn that we can expect. Because people will be staying in their homes, so they won't be spending, people won't be earning money. Um, so you can really expect um, the, the uh, severe economic downturn. And this is uh, happening all over the world. Next. So the IMF uh, came, up with, came out with, their, uh, with the report the other day, and they said that um, the pandemic will uh, bring the, wor the worst uh, global recession since the Great Depression in the, uh, in the 1920s and 1930s. So, and this is going to be much worse than the global financial crisis uh, back in 2008 and 2009, uh, where the global economy shrunk by 0.1%. But uh, this time, we expect the global economy to shrink by as much as 3%. So, this is really going to be a serious crisis. Next. Total economic losses could amount to as much as $9 trillion uh, this year and uh, next year. Next. And unlike uh, the, the global financial crisis where uh, developing economies um, seems to ha seem to have weathered it, this time around, both developed and developing economies will be, um, will be hit hard by this. Okay. Now, the uh, Philippines, what's going to happen in the Philippines, uh, many organizations uh, have come up with their, with their estimates. Uh, for example, ADB expects that growth will go down from 5.9% last year to as, much, to as low as 2%. IMF just uh, above 0.6%. 
And then our own economic agencies expect that um, we will be suffering the first uh, recession of the Philippines uh, since the Asian financial crisis in 1998. So a recession, uh, simply put, is just the negative uh, GDP growth. So the economy will be shrinking rather than uh, uh, grow. Okay, so what sectors will be affected? So basically <laughs> all sectors in the economy. So uh, it's almost uh, useless to distinguish what sectors will be hit hardest, but certainly for uh, business, trade and personal and public services, as well as uh, hotel and restaurant uh, businesses and other personal services, um, all these sectors will be affected, even agriculture to some extent. Now, lots of people will be needing help, uh, but uh, what kind of help do they need exactly? So first of all, workers won't be, many more workers won't be able to go to their jobs. So somehow we need to subsidize their wages and salaries. We can also give them cash transfers to help tide them over uh, uh, up to the point that we don't have the pandemic anymore. We can extend the zero interest loans to them as well. And then we can expand coverage of unemployment insurance. Next. Now, in the past uh, four weeks, uh, in the U.S., uh, uh, more than 22 million people have uh, applied for uh, jobless claims, uh, unemployment insurance, and uh, the statistics are really off the charts. Uh, in the Philippines, we don't have this kind of uh, wide coverage of unemployment insurance, which is unfortunate. Some people in the private sector are able to access it, but uh, access is limited. Businesses also need help, so we can also give them grants or bailouts, but from an economic perspective, it makes much more sense to give them zero interest business loans so that at least taxpayers can get back their money once a business uh, uh, goes back to normal. We can also extend the uh, bill payment extensions and holiday tax payment ex uh, filing ex extensions, etc., as well as tax credits for businesses that will promise not to leave off any of their workers. But in the Philippines, we face a particular problem when it comes to M uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises, which comprise uh, virtually every formal establishment, 99% of all formal establishments. So we will need this help uh, a lot. Next. Unfortunately, the economic team said that aid for businesses will take a back seat. They will be focusing on the poor and the workers, of course. But uh, I think uh, help uh, for the uh, uh, business sector also needs to be... to to come at the same time. Next. Now, of course, we also have to look out for the poor. So uh, the government is go giving subsidies, emergency subsidies. Um, next slide. And many poor people fear the fear hunger and poverty more, much more than the coronavirus. So this is a very serious concern for them. The government is giving out emergency, emergency subsidies uh, amounting to 5,000 pesos to 8,000 pesos, depending on where you are. But as uh, but next slide, but as I wrote in my most recent piece, uh, these emergency subsidies are way below the poverty lines. In other words, uh, these are not even enough uh, to meet the minimum income that you need for basic food and non-food need. Next, and then of course you have the logistical problems of delivering aid at this scale. Government simply did, simply does not have that kind of infrastructure in place giving 8 to 18 million poor families at the same time in a very vicious uh, manner. So that's a huge problem, the logistics of it. Next. I think the crisis uh, brings to light uh, the uh, gaps when it comes to the country's social protection system. So right now, we just spend around 1% of our GDP on uh, social protection. I think we really need to rethink and reform uh, social protection to make it to make our economy more contagion-proof in the future. Now, how much uh, how much is the total bill going to be when it comes to work uh, to aid uh, when it comes to workers, businesses, and the poor? Economists from UP estimate that the government will need to spend around 100 billion to 300 billion pesos to protect the economy, avert a recession, and arrest the misery that COVID-19 will bring. Next. Now, how exactly does the government plan to spend the money? Well, right now we don't even know because uh, people are asking us uh, over, over social media, where's the 275 billion promised by lawmakers? But uh, that was just an initial estimate. When you look at the Bayanihan to Hilas One Act, there's no 275 billion uh, pledged there. So uh, the government will need, still need to come up with the money 
And right now, we don't, they don't even have a proper breakdown of uh, how much aid will go to workers, businesses, and the poor. Next. So to, to, under the law, Duterte can reprogram, reallocate, or realign items in the budget and generate savings from that. But up to, up to now, more than three weeks later, there's still no detailed and comprehens comprehensive budget and budget breakdown. Uh, so people are, uh, need, need to know exactly uh, what the plan is. Uh, right now, there's no proper plan. Next. Now, Congress has, is coming up with uh, an economic rescue package. So I would argue that this is, this, is the, this is the kind of analysis that we need to see from the executive, but uh, we're seeing it instead from Congress. So for example, uh, Representative uh, Kimbo of Marikina came up, who by the way is an economist of UP uh, before. So she came up with this breakdown. So uh, a total of 370 billion pesos to be spent on wage subsidies, loan guarantees, and uh, other aid packages. We need this itemized breakdown uh, from the executive as well. Next. And then we also have to distinguish between the concept of budget and money. Just because uh, even assuming that the government already has a proper budget, it doesn't mean that they already have the money. So uh, Secretary Dominguez of Finance expects that the tax revenues will drop by 91 billion pesos this year because the economy is in shutdown. So you can naturally expect that uh, this will happen. They also expect money to come from government-owned and controlled corporations uh, amounting to 200 billion pesos in dividends. Next. Uh, the government also plans to, lo to uh, borrow from uh, abroad, especially multilateral agencies like the World Bank, ADB, and the Asian Infrastructure uh, Investment Bank to the tune of uh, one to two billion dollars. Uh, the government is also regularly auctioning off uh, government securities so we can get an additional 190 billion uh, from that in April, uh, well expectedly. And then the BSP has uh, lent uh, the national government 300 billion repayable in six months. Uh, but the government uh, still needs, uh, that's, a, that's a helpful injection of liquidity, but um, let's see how they will be able to repay that. Now, the government is uh, allaying fears of, uh, a blow up, uh, of a blowing up of the uh, debt uh, by saying that we have enough uh, headroom because the uh, debt to GDP ratio is uh, at an all time low of just around 40%, whereas back in the days of uh, the Arroyo administration, it's as high as 60 to 70%. Uh, so even if we borrow money now, the, the increase in the debt to GDP ratio will only be quite small. Next. Uh, but, but we also have to be to worry, to worry about the government spending habits because uh, as I wrote again for Rappler, uh, recently, uh, the budget deficit or the revenue shortfall of government actually skyrocketed to its all-time high uh, uh, last uh, quarter of uh, 2019. So that's uh, October, November, December. Uh, to an, uh, that's an all-time high. So in other words, uh, they're spending way beyond their means. Uh, there's not enough revenues, and yet they uh, poured money into many spending items uh, uh, last year. Next. So you can see that from this graph, so national government disbursements dis uh, really shot up in the la just the last quarter of uh, last year. So I guess what I'm saying here is that we need to monitor uh, very well how the government plans to spend the hundreds of billions pe in pesos of uh, economic relief uh, in relation to COVID-19. Next. Okay, so that's basically it. So there's a trade-off between the public health objective and the economic objective. And the problem is going to be more acute in poorer countries like ours, uh, where there's, uh, there's not, we don't have a robust social protection system. The gaps have been exposed. And moving forward, we really need to rethink uh, social protection to make our economy more contagion-proof. Next. Next, please. Okay, so, so I have written a lot of articles on this, so you can check rappler.com. Next. We also have explainers on usapangecon.com, one of our advocacies, and we can continue the conversation on Twitter. Next. That's all. Thank you.